Hey y'all, welcome to or welcome back to B-Rag Garage. Today we're gonna finally get back on my high school truck, this 85 Chevy uh, half ton square body. Uh, got a little bit of time in this one, kind of started getting it back, hopefully getting it running. Found out the distributor was just emptied out of parts. I don't know if my dad had been trying to fix it or what, but we got a new distributor. We're gonna try to drop that bad boy in there. And I'm hoping we can get that distributor out with this tool that J-Man let me borrow. So if you like the content, please consider subscribing. I really appreciate y'all, you're awesome. Let's, uh, let's see if we can't make this old thing be rad again, everybody. I uh, just thought I'd take a little quick walk around of this truck for y'all. Um, 1985 Chevrolet long bed, it's a half ton. Um, got our good old door doesn't stay open. So got our custom door keeper opener otherwise known as block of two by four. Um, this interior and seat and stuff is really still in great shape. It was outside, but um, really protected. My dad had feed sacks all over everything and cloths all over everything to really kind of protect it. Windshields busted up. Um, carpet, I think is starting to lift. I guess it maybe got wet in here or something like that, but doesn't smell or anything, thank goodness. It did for a while. We had to do some vacuuming and stuff. But uh, this is kind of interesting. My old man loved LMC. Um, and this is uh, a Highliner. And it has speakers. Sorry about the running around. Speakers all in it. Now, the downside of this headliner is it's glued in here with like that liquid nails epoxy. So it's never coming out. Um, this truck was a Silverado. So it had some nice interior stuff. Again, we're, we're losing... Um, losing switches and missing some trim pieces i mean stuff that just over time i drove this truck all through high school and then we got a uh i got a 90 dodge to drive to college and my dad took this one over it kind of became a work truck kind of still kept it sort of nice but anyway i just like this old truck it's uh it's surely because it was my first vehicle but as we go around here we come to the um pretty much gutless but what i've found to be awful reliable 305 um got a quadra bog on it uh we're having some issues right now with getting it started so new distributor new wires new plugs hopefully that's going to take care of everything all right y'all so i feel kind of silly now knowing there's specialty tools out there but i've been fighting with the hold down bolt that holds the fork down to keep the distributor shaft in the motor um i'll try to get in there and show y'all but i'm really hoping j-man let me borrow this bad boy he just bought it distributor clamp wrench i think you got it at napa i think we're gonna have to use the 9 16 one and i'm really hoping we can get that thing off of there um i'll lift up the cap here i guess my dad had been working on this truck um because it looks like it's there but that uh the ignition module or whatever on top there empty inside there is missing some parts let me let me see here stick stick out of the way okay it does have a rotor in it oh that's right the module in the bottom as well was just empty i found one in the truck but i did not start the truck then i kept searching and found out that housing on top is empty nothing in there so i have a whole new distributor been a while since I stra stabbed a new distributor. We're, uh, we're going to hope it goes according to plan. But uh, y'all will be here for it. Good, bad, or um, win, lose, or draw, as they say. So uh, let me see if I can get y'all a little closer to kind of see what I'm talking about. And then we'll try to get this tool to use. Right there, y'all. There's the offending bolt. You can see that. Man, you can kind of see that fork directly underneath here. Um, I've tried short wrenches shaved down wrenches are just a bunch of junk kind of in the way i'm really hoping that offset dips down there and pulls this thing off um i don't even think i could film y'all showing y'all what a pain it is you're just gonna have to trust me that this sucker is stuck and that i hope this gets it unstuck all right i don't know if i can get y'all in there but i think we're going to be using the 9 16 sign and a package says you put it on there and you can use this end or a 3 h drive as a uh, way to turn it. So let's just try this. Let's give it a shot here. Oh, yeah. Get away, because I took you out. There we go. Okay. All right. 
Yep. Nine sixteenths. Go right there. No. We'll go right there. Let's go here. And then let's go. Oh. Oh, I think it moved. I think it moved. Nope. Oh, come on, baby. Let's go. Oh, my goodness. Y'all, I'm serious. This has been... I don't even want to admit to y'all how many weeks, maybe even months at this point, I've been fighting this thing. This is awesome. That is awesome. Okay, perfect. So what that did was it stepped down, went over that bolt. Now, yeah, it's a little quarter turn at a time, but hey, who cares, man? Okay, well, I'm going to get that foot off. And I'm probably going to have to start labeling some stuff. Because, like I say, it's been a while since I've stabbed a distributor. All right, y'all, two ways to do this on stabbing a new distributor. One, the right way, which is getting the top dead center on cylinder one, which on a Chevrolet is in the front driver. So one, three, five, seven, two, four, six, eight. And then your spark plugs follow what's called a firing order. It might be one, three, five, seven, six, eight. They bounce all over the place. So you need to know your firing order. Um, a lot of cats can just knock these things out, manually rotate the engine. You get this piston over here, the cylinder to top dead center to the top. You point your rotor towards number one, you go to town. Now, if you have one you're replacing, like this truck was running and just quit. I think one of the modules went bad or whatever. So I'm gonna kinda hopefully cheat a little bit. And I've taken some pictures and some video of where everything is pointed. That's my number one spark plug wire right here. And my goal is gonna be to get this distributor out. I've also noted where the rotor inside there is pointing. And I'm hopefully gonna match the new distributor to the orientation it's at right now, set it back down in there, and theoretically this thing lights off. Now, if it does not do that, we're gonna have to do top dead center. So we're gonna try for the kind of cheap, kind of easier method and hope it works. I don't know how much y'all are really gonna be able to see. I'm really just gonna be underneath here trying to wiggle and lift this thing out. And then again, like I say, match the uh, orientations on the new one and see what we got. All right, y'all, I doubt I'm gonna be able to catch all this, but cap off, rotor's pointing at a fixed angle. I'm gonna put like a piece of tape or a mark like back there. Now, when you pick them up, they always kind of wiggle and they slip out, so they're moving there's a gear on the bottom and it's tapered one way or whatnot it goes one direction so as we lift it out of there if it moves this way or that way we'll have to make sure that we probably start our other one like that because when we reverse it and put it down it'll hopefully fall back in the same direction so let's uh let's see what we got here y'all might be the best i can do y'all gotta get up in here try not to fall down uh where can i put myself all right, unhooked, unhooked. All right. Okay, it's kicking back that way. Oh, I might need two hands. Can I just lean over? Nope. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. This wasn't as hard 20 years ago. All right, let's see. baby okay so it's kicking back almost straight to the back of the truck and where are you buddy hey those wires get eight again so many rat wires anyway all right here we go come on what is this oh the breather tube yeah, get off there. Yeah, okay. Okay. No junk. Oh, no, 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 no. Get out of there. Get out of there. Get out of there. Oh, man, there's so much junk down here. Crap. Oh, that makes me nervous, y'all. You don't want a mess down there. Come out of there. Okay. 
goodness gracious all those wires were eight too uh. all right i'm gonna have to get in here and clean this out very carefully because i don't want any of that junk falling back in the motor ow, 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 ow. okay i got it out hate to say it but that was probably the easy part all right fingers crossed we're going to try to point it directly back to the firewall hopefully it spins back towards the uh, um, driver's side oh, man. anybody else get nervous putting new parts on old junk i do Oh man, did it just did it just fall the right way? Oh wow. Okay, so my old man used to say it better be lucky than good. So I had it pointed straight back. It dropped and I was just barely wiggling it and it just kind of slipped and pointed back that way. So I think I think that's it. So I may time lapse it. All I'm gonna do is take this cap and I'm gonna mirror the spark plug wires one and one and one and one. I can already see right here, I got one that's not even plugged in. So definitely not gonna, well, it might run, but anyway, definitely have to fix that. Um, gonna mirror those, swap them back and forth, just make the same rotations and everything. Obviously these wires are trash, plugs are probably bad, but I didn't wanna just throw bad money after good. Um, no good money after bad. Ah, man. My brain's not working, y'all. But anyway, it's there. I'm gonna hush. See if we can't get it down. All right, well, I splashed too much gas everywhere. Hooked up an old battery. Gas has been drying for a minute or so. So I'm just gonna get in there and turn it over. It is still slightly loose, so you can kind of sort of time it just a little. My dad could do it awesome, like time it by ear. I don't really have that skill set, but let's just see if it even turns over. Or Well, oh. Missing that spark plug. I just talked about this spark plug. And where do you go? Wait, is that plug broken? Hold on. Wait, what? Two. On up here. There we go. All the way up to two. All right. Get on there. Yep. Okay, well, yeah, that's about right for me. All right, now let's turn it over and see if anything even happens. Are we right? Negative. All right, yeah, negative, positive, okay. All right, y'all, here we go. Okay, 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 I got, that gives me hope, right? That gives me hope because it almost sounded like it was gonna bark off. Um, let me maybe slightly twist that and uh, make sure all my hold downs are tight and all that. I'll be back. All right, let's open the throttle. Okay, maybe somebody will get down there. I don't know. Try it again, I guess. Okay, it seems like it's getting better the more I turn it. So I'm gonna turn it a little bit more, tighten it down a little tighter, and then we'll try again. Okay, here we go again. Tip number three or four or something. Let's go. Oh. Okay, okay. Not super great, right? I heard the backfire. We're not like killing it yet, but the dead gum thing ran. Let's go. That is one huge step 
for mankind over here. That is fantastic. Okay, okay, all right. Let me, uh, I might just tighten everything down where it is. Maybe that's a fuel thing. I'll make up a temporary fuel system, etc., and we'll go from there. All right, um, whew, okay, this is exciting. All right, I'll be back to y'all in a little bit. Okay, everything tightened down. I kind of maxed out my turnage there. Let's, let's see if this does any better. Okay, things are definitely not perfect. However, that is okay. Do not need perfect right now. I just need confirmation it runs. I have horrible spark plug wires. There's mouse chews all over them. They've ate them up. Plugs have been in there since I don't know how long. So other things are happening. I don't know exactly how to get it timed just right. Maybe I've tightened it down. There are two terms. There's advancing your timing and retarding your timing. When the timing is retarded, it is harder to start the vehicle. And when it's advanced, that's something that has struggle, uh, struggles to idle and whatnot. Um, and that has to do with its position. If you're top dead center, if you're behind top dead center, you're retarded. If you're past it, you're advanced. So I apologize for not having the real like ins and outs. I just, I don't want to give y'all information that's not right. So I'd rather just not say anything. But this thing runs. I think what I'm going to do is put plugs and wires in it. No need for y'all to really watch that because again i'm not gonna be showing you much besides just taking out a spark plug and a wire one at a time I'm just gonna do the same thing follow them around and i'll probably rig up a fuel system of some kind maybe take off this clamp right here and just run some gas to the uh to the carb that way with like a, a little clicky clack pump or something but man that is fantastic i am pleased as punch that is awesome all right so just a quick little Quick little bit on spark plug removal and changing if you haven't done that before or want to know you are going to need some spark plug sockets the reason is they have you probably can't see but there's a little rubber boot in here and what that does is hangs on to the top the porcelain of the spark plug and keeps it from um, from getting broken because if you put a regular socket on these and twist they can very easily break so like for example this part here is going to go in here and you can't really tell, but this is tight going through here. Sticks in there, fits good. Now, um, taking them off, lefty loosey, righty tighty. Y'all got that, 3 h drive usually. Now, one thing I will say, every spark plug has what's called a gap. And that's the, the gap between the, I think I call this a diode and this, uh, this tip right here. So in between the tip of the spark plug and this curved piece of metal right here. Now, the way you gap them is you have either like this handy dandy O'Reilly's little keychain sized one, or you have what's called feeler gauges, which is a bunch of thin pieces of metal where you add them up to make a certain stack and gap them. So for example, this one, spark plug gap, 0.045, it's down here on my, uh, my info sheet here. So what you wanna do is, let's see, we're gonna start 020, 30, oh, 40. And then what you do is you just kind of wiggle it. Don't go too crazy. Just kind of barely bend up, barely bend up till you just kind of roll over. All right, and right there, 0 0.045, because 0 0.5 here. So this one is gapped and can go back in there. Now what I'm gonna do is take it super simple. You can either go one at a time on the actual distributor or you can do each side at a time. Like, I think I'm just gonna do the driver's side. Um, I mean, I'm sorry, the passenger side, geez. And what I'll do is I'll take this wire off of here, take our wire kit that we got here. I believe this is 9052 from O'Reilly's. I'm gonna match that wire's length, make sure it's the right one, plug it back in where it goes. And I'm gonna do that one at a time. There's some dudes out there, man, those cats can just slap these wires off, throw them back on, they got it all memorized and hey, that is awesome. But I work a lot slower than a lot of folks and um, I really try to watch myself on errors and whatnot because I don't have anybody here to help me fix them, just me. 
so anyway yeah um not really going to film anything i don't think i showed y'all how to gap them just going to take them off match the wire and then do that all through and then we'll get a new set of plugs and wires in here i don't think these are perfect these are 45 ts's um i'm going to pull these out and see what they are i had these and there's a new set of eight so we're going to go with them but uh let me see what's in here now. you know i guess there's one more thing i want to cover um reading a spark plug um oh look at that r45 ts awesome so those will match so you can tell a lot about your engine from your spark plug i'm not an expert but if they're real bad one way or the other i can tell let's see what about right here can y'all see this is corroded kind of gross now it's not super oily so it may not be blowing oil on the cylinder or uh putting oil out but this is really junky kind of surprised it was running if they all look like this but these chevrolets they just as y'all know, a small block Chevy just wants to run. But anyway, um, that's where, yeah, that's way better. Sorry. But yeah, we'll take a look at all these. And uh, I like to stack them down like in order and take a look at everything. That way, if something's really crazy with cylinder six or whatever, you kind of know. So uh, yeah, let me start working these out and we'll take a look at two through eight. All right. So let's see, we got here. We match these two up. Try to get that in frame. They're the same length um most of the time these straight boots are going on a lot of these older trucks but they could both be angled shouldn't matter if they're both angled which one goes on there but on this these trucks you want the straight boot to go under here and then the 90 to go up on the uh on the actual distributor so we're gonna take our i guess we'll go through one of them may as well because we've already got this one gapped and everything now, I will say with these, again, with the porcelain, and they are easy to break. Well, not easy, but you can break them. So don't just high ya ugga dugga them down. Um, what I like to do is, if I can't reach under there and start them like this, I try to start them with a, a, an extension, and try to get as much as you can by hand before you try to tighten it with your wrench. Because you do not want to like cross thread these or something happen. Oh, don't roll them. Come on. Okay, perfect. There we go. Righty tidy. Awesome. So what I usually like to do is hand tighten them and then maybe go like a quarter or a half turn to feel how that feels. You really uh you really don't want to just raw like again, you don't want to ugga dugga these in there. Quarter, quarter. Okay, that's a whole turn right there. Two. Okay, that's about a turn and a half. Okay, and that's pretty tight. So, then after you get that one, I'll show y'all what this looks like. Uh, it's not going to come through. There's a small metal cap on here that actually clips on the plug. Then this is an insulator, and then we're going to run up to the top here. So you want to feel and listen for a click, which is not happening. <clears throat> Get on there. There we go. Maybe? Yes, we're on there. Uh, this one was coming over. I guess we'll just follow that same route. And then we'll clip it right here. All right. Seven more to go. So I'm just going to take my time here. Do all these, and like I say, maybe we'll take a look at two through eight and see how they look when we're done. Well, I'm back faster than I thought I'd be. I just told y'all about a straight boot, 90 boot. Now, number four down there had both 90s. There's 90s on both ends, and I found the piece that had both 90s. So do your best to keep them, uh, keep them the same. Uh, does it have? Yes, okay, right here. Since they're both 90s, it says distributor coil. And then this just says KY, whatever, KW, whatever. So that means this is gonna take the place of this one up at the coil. Hey y'all, here's two, four, six, eight, one, three, five, and seven. All of them are pretty sooty and kind of oily, some worse than others. And then you got two being super weird with like that, um, I don't know, like electrodes or some kind of corrosion, pretty, pretty jacked up. So I thought, you know, let me just turn it over i'm gonna hook up this fuel system and all that. let me just turn it over i turned it over two or three times and i immediately smelled look at this y'all clearly the fuel pump works i unhooked it from here 
Should have unhooked it from the bottom. Didn't do it. I know, I know. That was not smart. But this thing just blasted the most varnished, gross-smelling gas all over the place. So let that be a reminder to y'all. Take away the source of things, the source of electricity, the source of fuel. Don't do like B-Rag Garage and have it spraying all over. I mean, look, my brand new dang distributor. Hadn't been in here an hour. Soaked with gas. Plus, not to mention that's all electrical. So now I gotta sit here and wait for the breeze to take away the, uh, um, <sighs> take away the dang gas. So, all right, let me undo the fuel pump and then we'll finally, maybe it'll be dry and we'll finally try to run this thing off our little clicky clack pump down to our gas. All right, gas. so I stuck a spark plug in there, but I've also taken out the, uh, um, the actual uh, supply. And it's quite a bit drier now. It's been about five minutes or so. Um, I did kind of change my mind. This is supposed to be a low pressure clicky clacky, but I think what I'm gonna try to do is just try to prime up the system. 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000. And just try to get a bunch of good fresh gas to the carb and see if this thing will light off and run. Um, man, that'd be sweet if it did. All right, y'all, let's give this a shot. Three, two, one, lift off. Oh, wake up. And it might be too much fuel. That's kind of what I was worried about, was forcing too much fuel. Let me get in there and work the throttle a little bit, see if that helps. Sounded like it's flooded, huh? What do y'all think? What do y'all think? Give her some time, maybe. Let it uh, let it sit for a second, and we'll get back to it. Y'all was just the opposite. There was no fuel. Um, I thought I had primed it, but I guess not. So I'm gonna. I know I've got gas to there now. Let's let's leave it at that. So I do not have the pump on. Let's try one more time. Also, is our, well, there's gas there. Is our filter clogged, or do we even have a filter in here? All great questions. Okay, back again. All right, so what I've done now is I turned on my pump and I primed the carb, kind of put some gas in the carb. Um, I don't know, maybe there's obstruction in that filter. I don't know, put gas in the carb. Let's turn the pump back on and let's try again. Okay, it's running. All right, come on, man. Come on, here we go. Come on, girl. Okay, 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 okay. Dang it. We're so close, y'all. Okay, gas in the carb, primed it up to there but I do not run the pump. We'll see what that does. Try that old gas. Come on, three, two, one, go. Yeah. 
Okay, 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 okay. So it could be, could be in here. We could be not getting gas. Let's let's take a look at that. All right, it's got to work now, right? It's got to work. Come on. I think this is not pointing to a fuel issue anymore because it is lighting off. However, it can't keep running, it's backfiring and stuff. So that has to do with me and my distributor work. I don't have it quite right yet. So we're gonna have to do some troubleshooting on that. All right, y'all, day two, fresh set of eyes. Awesome morning this morning, beautiful weather. Um, I have kind of primed the carb with some fuel. The uh, the sadness happened. Let me show y'all. Um, if y'all have ever dealt with these, y'all know that this fitting going into this fitting into here is always kind of scary because these can get stripped or galled up. Well, my dad already had to use a piece of copper tubing and flare it. And then when I looked, it's twisted all the heck. Like, I was able to separate it and get it back on here, but I feel like it's going to leak like all get out. So I think just to start, like I say, I've primed the carb, um, used the pump to just pump some here in the bowl here and in here, and I've loosened that nut down there for the distributor. You know, usually maxed out anything isn't great, and I had maxed out the, uh, the twist. Um, so what I did was loosened it, barely pulled it, I guess that's, yeah, barely pushed it back clockwise, just a touch. So I want to put some fuel in here and see if this thing will even run like off the car. And it was a mess up there. I spilled it everywhere. So um, it's still pretty shiny, but I blotted off uh, most of it. And let's see if this thing will turn over and fire up. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, it's gonna idle. Oh, it's gonna idle. Oh man, that's awesome. The choke was trying to work. I saw it trying to turn. Um, man, my old man hated a choke. I don't, maybe because we didn't grow up up north where it gets actually cold, but man, he cut a choke off in a heartbeat. I don't know if that's good or bad, but he always did it. Um, man, that's awesome. I don't know if that's leaking from the accelerator pump or if that's just a little puddle of gas I missed. I, uh, I think I may pressurize this tubing down here and see how bad it's going to leak i think it's going to leak no matter what but we'll see how bad and then maybe we can try to see if fuel's getting through there because i did check last night there's no filter in there so whatever junk got pumped up which my bad i can't believe i didn't undo the fuel pump whatever junk got shot through there there was no filter to catch it so i'm hoping we can even move gas through there so let me try that and I'll get back to y'all. So there's definitely an issue down here because I, when I had the pump running, I could hear it running. When I pulled the hose off of that piece of pipe, gas sprayed everywhere. So it's pressurizing too there, but it's not getting in the carb. So we obviously have a problem in there. Um, some junk or some trash got in there. So what I think I'm gonna do now is see if it'll start and then see if I can kind of bottle feed it with the uh, with the pump. Okay, good start. Okay, too much fuel. Oh, it's pouring out the sides and everything. Yeah. Whoa, too much. Too much. Too much. Man, I don't want to run out of time today and not have a video of y'all of this thing idling. Dang it. All right, I'm going to pull that off and then spray some carb cleaner up there. I really don't want to get into taking that carb off today if I can help it. All right, filled the bowl, dropped some in the carb, probably too much. Let's see if this thing will finally idle for y'all. 
Come on, baby. Come on. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, stalled it out. That's what I get for trying to help. I kind of thought bottle feeding it like that would not be possible because it'd be too much. And it looks like I was right. I hate when I'm right about me doing the wrong thing, you know? That sounds like a miss, doesn't it, y'all? Might be some upper valve train noise or something, too. Hmm. But hey, even with my limited skill set, if it's idling even a little rough, that means I'm close enough here to fine tune it if I can get it to idle. So I got to figure out this fuel situation. Um, and man, if we could get a fuel system to it, I really feel like we could get it to idle and we could kind of tiny adjust it and get it right. All right, believe it or not, there's no um, leakage or there's no, uh, no leakage either. We saw that, but there actually is flow through the copper pipe in there. I gave it the old windpipe test and blew on the inlet side and air was coming out the pipe. Now I can't speak for flow rate. It might not be enough or et cetera, but uh, um, I'm going to try to fire it up again. And then again, try to see if I can just tap, tap, uh, maybe putting fuel into the bowl. I don't know. This is, uh, this is interesting, you know? No, uh, let's go back to, let's just try it. Cause we know there's no blockage. I went in, I sprayed carb cleaner in there. Hopefully we got it. Let's, uh, let's try it again, y'all. Okay, good time. I think it's probably gonna spray again. Yep. Did y'all see that? So clearly there's an issue getting flow into there. Man, I wish I had an old little brock or something with me. Throw on here and test. Dang it. Yeah, I don't know if that's too much pressure here and it can't get through there or if we've still got a blockage in there. Spray again? Maybe not. Oh, goodness gracious. Not cool, man. Ah, too much. All right, I've never really done this before. Let's see if we can maybe feed the bowl. definitely floods it out that's what happened last time so we know that's what's going to happen every time it's too much pressure um the reason i'm not bottle feeding it y'all which a lot of y'all probably yelling at me and and i'm not mad at you for yelling um to just bottle feed it my hope was i could figure out a way to automate a fuel system that way i could maybe mess with the distributor i don't know if i got the coordination to do both but at this point I think we need to see if we can just bottle feed it to make the thing run uh, more than three seconds. All right, y'all, now we're going to go old school and just try to bottle feed it and get it to idle on its own. Come on. Well, a little better, but I mean, let's be honest. There's enough vacuum leaks in here to uh, um, 
I don't know, sink a ship? I don't know. There's a rat bitten off one here. We got this huge inlet one coming from the fuel line. Um, hmm. Smoke out of the transmission dipstick. I don't think I've seen that before. I don't really like that. It does have oil in it, y'all. Um, check that. Let's see. I know it's not running, but... Ooh. Ooh. Pretty low. Let's see what we got here. Uh, yeah, it's on add a quart. I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. Go ahead and add that quart of transmission fluid. Uh, it's not going to hurt anything. I don't want it to be trying to. What if I get it warmed up one day or something? So, uh, probably add that in. I don't know, y'all. I'm kind of kind of stuck because I got the quadrajet. I got my weird fueling issue. I don't know. Let's, uh, let's regroup. I'll be back. Hey, y'all. Hope y'all enjoyed watching that as much as I did making it. I know it kind of turned into more of a will it start instead of a will it run. I know we didn't get it to move and didn't try a lot of the things I really wanted to, but man, this was a huge jump for me. You get the right tool for the job. You get the silly distributor bolt out, drop a distributor in and move on. So I hope y'all are enjoying it. Um, we'll definitely have more on this truck. Got a couple other square bodies. We're still working on the Jeep project, the trailer. Um, a lot of irons in the fire, but I'm digging it. Um, if y'all like the content, please consider subscribing. Helps me out a ton, but everything y'all do helps. Watching, commenting, liking, all of it is awesome. Subscribing, everything. So thank y'all again for everything y'all do. I uh, guess it's time for me to hush, and now it's time for y'all to get out there and make it be rad, everybody.